Greg, are there situations that still make you nervous or anxious? And if so, what are your tactics to build confidence in those situations? Yeah, constantly. I mean, because I always push myself to something that I don't know. So for example, when we made films, I sought counsel and I have sat down with the greatest minds to find out what they did. Right now we're working on two TV reality shows. So I'm reaching out to people that you know, started e-entertainment and all these different things to find out exactly what they do. And the way that I do it is I show up as my authentic self. Uh, back to that Mike Hilton uh, interview with NASCAR. I'll, I'll I rarely share this story, but since you kind of brought this up, it was a good one. I remember I was out there and we we're doing this interview and he's this huge like John Wayne character of a gentleman. And he was sitting there and his arms were crossed and he was an angry guy and the whole office was filled with all of his employees and camera crews and all this different stuff. And it was just dull. It wasn't going anywhere. And I go, you know what, Mike? I go, I think I owe you an apology. And he goes, why? I go, this is the worst interview I ever did. He goes, what? I go, yeah, this is not going anywhere. You don't want me here. I understand that. I go, let's just stop. So we get up and start taking off our microphones. And I go, hey, Mike, let me ask you something. And he goes, what? I go, you know, when you got that first million dollar check, that big giant cardboard thing, I go, when you went home and told your mom, what'd she say? He go, you know what? She told me to take out the trash, but my dad, he loved it. In fact, he told me, and, and then he sat back down and all of a sudden he reached in his pocket and he pulled out this tattered piece of paper. I mean, literally, it's just falling apart. And I go, what's that? He goes, it's the Cowboys ethics, code of the West. I go, what did they mean? He goes, this is how we started NASCAR. He goes, people don't understand this, but back in the earlier days, he goes, when the Nance family started it, uh, it was all about, you know, Winston Cup smoking cigarettes and drinking and, you know, we were moonshiners. He goes, but I saw more families coming out. So I did the Cowboys ethics, which is, you know, say less, you know, speak less, say more, do what's right, right for the brand. And I go, give me an example. He goes, well, I realized that M&Ms and Tide were more family brands. So we got rid of the Winston and we brought in these different ones. And he goes, what we did is we, we changed everything all based on this paper. And everyone in the thing was like, oh, all this different stuff. And it ended up being one of the greatest interviews I ever did. And as I walked out, the vice president, the vice president of NASCAR pulls me aside on my little rental car and says, you're not going to believe it. Because I've been working with this guy for 25 years. I never knew he had that in his pocket. That's amazing. That absolutely amazing. All right, next up, I'm a rapid fire. Greg, you mentioned one of the major principles is action. What is another principle that is common from successful individuals? You know, surround yourself with people, again, that are accomplishing what you want to do. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, just put a new hubcap on it. And understand your weaknesses and strengths. So, for example, if you uh, want to knock on doors, I'm just giving you an example, but you're afraid to, have the courage to budget some dough aside to pay some kids to knock on some doors. <laughs> some hanger. Do some act actual So, work your strengths, hire your weaknesses, or work your strengths and leverage your weaknesses. Um, so, what does that mean? Well, I don't have money to hire someone. Well, guess what? I don't know what the laws are, so I, I, I'm going to preface how this when I say this. However, maybe you can sit there and say, hey, uh, go out and knock on the doors and do this portion of me, and then I'll share some of the profits that I make from doing this next day. But there's always a way to leverage. I remember during the COVID times, someone came up and said, hey, I got this idea for a clothing line of this cool brand. Uh, and then I knew another guy who made T-shirts in his you know, garage, and they couldn't work anymore because everything was shut down. And another person made websites. So you put the three together. Now, all of a sudden, they've got a three-pronged business where everyone's working their strengths and together came out with a clothing line that's going crazy. You see the difference? So there's always a solution to our challenges. Next up, what would you say to someone who is considering leaving their current career to start a new venture? You know, again, I, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a psychologist. And you only know what's best for your family. But I am one of those crazy believers that... I think we should work our day job and work our side hustle until our side hustle becomes bigger than our day job, or at least if we can know we can make that transact uh, transition because scared money doesn't make money. You know, the old rap song, but it's true. So for myself, again, this is just because you're asking my counsel is I would sit there and make sure that I had something going over here and I've got the uh, words of wisdom, at least got the knowledge and experience to go forward. And here's another thing. If I wanted to get into something brand new, for example, the music industry, I'll make it up. And I knew nothing about it before I quit my job and go into music industry. What I would do is I'd ask to volunteer and to work for free at a music studio. And then I would do that for a week, a month, a year, whatever, to see if I even liked the industry before I give up my whole 
you know, dreams to go to something. And I think people miss that opportunity. There's so many ways to go test and try things without having to go all in and put yourself in jeopardy. 